In the last episode, Patrick Hornquist scored four goals against us in a single playoff game. Is that right? No, he scored four goals in a playoff game in a single period, which was ridiculous. So I asked you guys if that's ever been done before. And SP Baker, officially the new team research guy, he hits us with some facts. He says 35 players, 39 times total, have scored four or more goals in a playoff game. Five of them were five goal games. 12 players have scored four goals in one period, two times in the playoffs. Make it three now with Patrick Hornquist. Most recently, Recently, Patty Marlowe did it in a 5-2 win against the Avalanche. Boom, SP Baker, you are officially the research guy. Woo! Damn, Patrick Hornquist. What's going on, guys? And welcome back to another episode of your Buffalo Sabres Cup for Jack franchise mode. In the last video, we got the playoffs all said and done. Unfortunately, we didn't secure the bag. We got bounced in the second round by the Tampa Bay Lightning. They were just too big, too strong, too skilled, too fast. They took care of us in six games. Now, this offseason is an interesting one because we have to look at it at a few different angles. This is an angle of we just had a 57 win season so again if it ain't broke don't fix it but there is some big contracts we have to fulfill and, and it changes things because I'm only here for four more years but look at all the contracts we have to re-sign Dolan, Hall, Reinhardt, Olofsson, Stahl, Cahoon we gotta shell out some big time bucks to a lot of these players the only thing that's concrete is our goaltenders Elvis and Ryan Miller so we're definitely gonna bring back Elvis for next year. He had an amazing year. I think he went 42 and 16 or something. Yeah, 42, 16 and 1. Absolutely unbelievable. What a start to his young career. 55 and 25. Not a bad start for the young kid. Uh, is he Latvian? Is he straight out of Latvia? Yeah, he is straight out of Latvia. Elvis, baby. Elvis is in the building. To be totally honest with you, I don't think goaltending really matters in this franchise mode. If you guys watched my recent Edmonton Oilers um, career sim with McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. I mean, yes, they have Leon and Connor, but they were winning cups with like a 78 overall goalie, and it's not the first time I've seen it happen. So we're going to wait to sign all of these guys because we have to get the draft done first. We do have a couple of comments here, and they are regarding the contracts. Nolan Oliver, he says, as a Sabres fan, and he does have the Sabres as his display picture, so I guess that checks out. I would love to see the young kids stick around. Everyone here in Buffalo wants to see the youngins grow with Jack. I agree with you. That's my plan. I don't want to ship out anyone. I don't want to ship out Cousins or Casey Middlestat. I don't want to do that. Now, Brandon Barenfeld, I'm not sure what his role on the team is going to be yet. In previous franchise modes, he was the assistant GM. He was the beer guy in section 302. He was the stats guy. He was the VP of Hockey Ops. Let me know in the comments what you think Brandon's role should be in this franchise mode. But he says Eric Stahl is going to have to go, unfortunately. You have Middlestat and Cousins growing. Middlestat will probably be ready for second line minutes. You may also want to improve your fourth line this offseason if you have the cap to do so. Now, I hope I have the cap to do so. Definitely taking that into account. And there's also another comment here from Kamikaze. He says, you're really hard on middle stat, but completely ignoring the fact that 87 overall Sam Reinhardt had three points in 12 playoff games. That's right. Sam Reinhardt did not have a very good playoff, and I think that really hurt us. I mean, Rasmus Dahlin didn't have a point in the six games that we played against the Tampa Bay Lightning. They just shut him down. I think Tampa really just completely shut us down. There were some guys that didn't perform, i.e. Sam Reinhardt and Casey Middlestat. One assist in 12 games. Just simply not good enough. So I'm not blowing up the team or anything like that. We just had 57 wins, so I don't think there's a need to do anything crazy. But we are going to hop into the draft here. We are going to see if there is any potential trades we can make. I'm really not opposed to trading away our first round pick, but for what? What's our pick? Our pick is number 24, so it's not like it's going to be a fantastic pick anyways. I think for this year, we are going to hang on to our first round pick, and then for years um, 2, 3, 4, and 5, we can think about maybe trading that pick for, for assets, because our first round pick could still be something in year 5. So, so obviously all these guys, we're not going to have a chance to draft, so we're looking at the 20 to 25 
five range, I think, is where we should be potentially picking any one of these guys. So we don't really need a center. I'm looking to more toward the winger, and that's all that's available is just centers. Great. Uh, any gems? Is there any gems out here? Now, scouting is bugged for the first year, so don't worry about that. We'll get back to scouting in the next year. Uh, looks like there's no gems, unfortunately. So around 20 to 25, what are we going to pick? Who are we going to pick? It is unfortunate that scouting is glitched because it's just another thing that makes this franchise mode so annoying. But we got this guy here, Jacqueline Co. Am I pronouncing that right? Jacqueline uh, or Jaoquin? I have no idea, but a six foot two grinder scouted to go 16th overall, but uh, the Central Scout has him 21st. It's a few picks before our pick. We have Jade Lawton here. Unfortunately, we don't have any info on any of these players, because scouting is glitched. LA has the first overall pick, and no surprise, they pick Atu Ratti. They add another top-tier prospect to their already insane prospect pool. The Winnipeg Jets get a medium elite left-wing sniper, 79 overall, and then the Minnesota Wild pick a 77 two-way forward. There you go, medium elite, and then Trevor Wong, who always seems to grow to like 90 overall. Uh, the Habs pick uh, what I assume is a French guy, and ooh, look at that. Abby Boulin, that's a nice pick there for the Ottawa Senators. Brandstrom, Shabbat, Habi Boulin, damn. Looking at a nice uh, defensive core there. 77 medium elite, 7th overall. Damn. There's some nice players here. We're going to round out the top 10. Arizona makes a nice pick after completely screwing up the uh, Mitchell Miller situation, but we won't get into that. Dylan Gunther, the big kid from Edmonton, goes to Chicago. You love to see it. So I don't think I'm going to trade up. I'm not going to do any Anything of that nature and the Leafs they pick up that guy Co 66 medium top six okay not bad not bad at all the reason why I'm not gonna trade up and the reason why I don't think we should trade up is because we don't really have any assets right now all of our players are either unrestricted or they're free agents or they're young guys so we're gonna stick with the draft we're going to completely stay on course we're not gonna do anything not gonna do anything crazy right now for year number one so we have a couple players here to to choose from. We got Jude Lawton, we have Derek Delmas, and we got Braxton Sexsmith here. Uh, our scout recommends Jude Lawton. He's a left winger. You know, let's go with our scout here. Let's go ahead and pick him. Jude Lawton, welcome to Buffalo. He is 65, medium, top six. Okay, not bad. Not bad. I'll take it. Let's see what we missed out on here. I think we made a pretty good choice. Yeah, it's definitely the best player available, unless there's like a medium elite guy hanging out back here. Vancouver gets Kidney. Definitely made the right pick there. Let's go ahead and move on to 55th overall. I wouldn't mind picking a goalie here if there's one of available early in the second round unfortunately it doesn't look like there is one well there's one that's 68th overall we're 55th overall so if we really like this guy unfortunately we have no info on him he was playing over there in the khl uh marcus with two s's i don't think i've seen the name marcus spelt with one s in franchise mode it's always spelt with two uh that's a pretty big reach but i wanted a goalie i said i wanted a goalie and i think i'm gonna stick with that I think I'm gonna make the reach here we're going to pick a little bit off the board where is he uh, there's also this guy Ola Ola Ilya okay Ola Ilya what a fantastic name Ola Ilya, he, he scouted to go 72nd overall. And then Marcus Latipov, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. We go with the Russian or do we go with the Swede? All right, six foot one. Unfortunately, there's no information on him, so it's not like I can really do much. Um, I think I'm going to go with Ola Lilia. It's kind of a hard name to say. Ola Lilia, Ola Lilia. He's a bit bigger. Uh, KHL goalies, I don't know. Let's go with the big Swede here. Ola, let's see what he's looking like. Six foot three, medium elite, 58 overall. That's a selection, baby. That guy could grow real quick. That's an awesome, awesome pick. I went with my gut there, and we definitely made the right choice. Tucker Tyne, and how's it going, buddy? I would have loved to pick him. Uh, former franchise mode legend, Tucker Tynan. Seeing if there's any uh, steals here in the late round. We got Frank going to Arizona. 
Arizona, a nice low elite player. I want to check out what that Russian goalie was looking like, Marcus with two S's. Okay, so the Montreal Canadiens took Marcus with two S's. He's 47 overall medium elite. So I went with my gut. That was the right choice. I'm happy about that pick. 47 overall, and I think this guy's 58 overall. So that was a huge win. Yeah, definitely made the right choice there. Went with my gut and it paid off. Now we've picked a forward. We've picked a goalie. Let's pick a defenseman if there's one available. Uh, Lucas Ramberg. He's the best defenseman available. Or Cademan Eastwood. Uh, Eastwood's a fantastic name, but we've had good luck with Swedes in this draft. Let's go with let's go with Lucas Ramberg, 59 medium top six. All right, going over to 179th overall. I'm happy about that medium elite goalie. That guy could be serious for us in a few years. He could really really grow quickly. This guy's name is Ivan Ivan. What were your parents? This is a real guy, Ivan Ivan. Yes, let's name him Ivan. Ivan Ivan. What the hell, Ivan Ivan? That guy's a real guy? I gotta Google him. Yep, he's a real guy, straight out of the Czech Republic. Ivan Ivan. Oh my god, poor guy. Think he got picked on in, in school? Oh man, you hate to see it. All right, what are we picking here? We've picked a goalie, a forward, a defenseman. We've done what I like to do in the draft, picking all three. Let's go with the best player available here. Aiden Tubert, he is scouted to go 175th, who's actually dropped in the draft a little bit. So here we go. Let's go ahead and select him with our sixth round pick. Yeah, whatever. Probably not going to be anything for us. And the last pick of the draft for the Buffalo Sabres. What are we going to do? You guys know I like drafting 20-year-olds. Let's see if it's a 20-year-old out there. Ooh, we got a Burre. Andre Burre. Ooh, you guys know I love a good Burre. Um, any other 20-year-olds? We got that guy who's an absolute unit, six foot five. You know what? I'm going to go with the Burre. Andre Burre. He's not 20 years old. He's only 18, but I'll take him. 50 overall, medium top nine. Whatever, I'll take him. Honestly, I like our first round pick but our second round pick Ola Lilia what a fantastic name uh, medium elite 58 overall goalie I went with my gut and it paid off you absolutely love to see it now it's time to get down to work after I go ahead and re-sign our coaches here Clancy he's our god tier coach I do not want to lose this guy he's awesome uh, his um, team fits more like 78% is what it was last year so yeah I'm gonna give him whatever he wants how about we'll make it a nice $3.1 million. Enjoy the extra million for the next five years. Lock them in. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and re-sign everyone else, and then we will get to the actual re-sign stage. All right, so here is what I'm nervous about. What are these players going to want? Is their asking price going to drop? First off, let's check out Taylor Hall. He had a fantastic year, 30-something goals. I think he had almost 80 points. Uh, he had 83 points, 35 goals. Just a perfect year for Taylor Hall. What what does he want? We have $39 million in cap space and he wants 9.3 for eight years. Okay. What about Rasmus? He wanted over 10. He now wants 9.6. So it came down a little bit. Sam Reinhardt, he wants nine by seven. Oh my God. Victor Olafson, what's he going to want? He wants nine. Oh God. Eric Stahl, this is rough. Dominic Cahoon, does he still want six? He wants 5.5. Wow, this is crazy. Okay, Casey Middlestat wants 4.8. What have you done to warrant 4.8? We're going to go ahead and qualify his rights. That's one player that I want to keep, but I do not want to pay that much money for. No way. So let's get the two big guns done. Let's get Taylor Hall and Rasmus Dahlin underway. They both want contract extensions. Uh, let's offer, let's start low here. Um, let's go 9 by 7 for Rasmus Dahlin. Let's try that. And then Taylor Hall, I know he wants term and he should get term because he's a guy who's uh, signed a one-year deal in Buffalo to prove himself and he did just that but I'm more comfortable at like the eight like the eight six mark eight six by eight that's a big boy contract for Taylor Hall what about if we go oh, it's still gonna go up it's tough. I don't want to overpay. Let's go 8.5 by 8. That seems like a fair deal. Plus, he wants to stay here. So we're really loading up here. That is like 30 million between three guys. I don't love doing that, but sometimes you got to. I think with Olafson as well, we are going to qualify him. Um, he wants 9 million bucks. He wants more than Hall. We're going to go ahead and qualify him because I have a feeling either A, he's going to get offer sheeted, which I don't think he will, but B, he'll probably wait a little 
little bit and his offer will come down to a more reasonable number because 8 million is just ridiculous. As for Dominic Cahoon, sorry, 9 million is a little bit ridiculous. As for Dominic Cahoon, I'd like to hang on to him as well. We're going to qualify him. Uh, let's check out here. Goalies, we don't have to do anything with. Uh, I do want to give uh, my boy Ula a contract. Like Even guys like Jake McCabe want a ton of money, 5.9 for 3. Brandon Montour wants 4.4. What does Yoki Haru want? Yoki Haru wants 2.9. We're going to qualify him. What else we got here? Madison Bowie. There's a bunch of guys I signed in free agency. I don't want Tobias Reader. I don't want Irwin. Pierlini will qualify. All right, let me clean this stuff up, and then I'll get back to you guys in a second. So I was actually wrong. Uh, Ryan Miller is actually an unrestricted free agent. Now, Miller's been awesome. I really like Ryan Miller, but we do have UPL coming up. I think we should give UPL the back backup minutes here. He's going to be ready. He's 22 years old. He's listed as a minor backup, but he's going to be ready. You have to play young goalies. So I think we are going to release Ryan Miller. I know it's been a great story, but unfortunately he's 40 years old. He wants to win now. I don't know if we're going to win in year number two. So best of luck to Ryan Miller. I hope that someone sends him a picture when we do win the cup. We're going to go with UPL as our backup and Elvis as our starter. As for everyone else, else I'm going to just qualify. Okay, I've sent a contract out to the guys I want to give a contract to. Sam Reinhardt, we're going to worry about that after. Eric Stahl, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Let's advance a day, see if anyone signs right away. Uh, Clancy, okay, so he's good. Our god-tier coach is back. That's good. Gord Boss, there you go. He's technically not a boss. He's an assistant coach, but there you go. He's back as well. Uh, Reve, he's back. So we got the exact same coaching staff as we had last year which is great all right taylor hall he says i'm interested in coming back your offer was not enough to entice me okay no worries you know start low it's all good rasmus darling the king he doesn't care about money he just wants to play at a boy rasmus is good all these guys these guys are all young guys yeah that's fine that uh medium elite goalie we just uh drafted go ahead and ink him right away so we have 29 million and a couple big guys we have to sign here and I'd still like to be a player in free agency as well. Dylan Cousins is up to an 83, so that's awesome news. That's fantastic. 29 million, and we have to give 5, 10... I mean, I don't know if we're going to be able to re-sign these guys. This is a really rough cap situation here. We're at the point now, do we let Taylor Hall walk? Would you guys rather have Taylor Hall or Sam Reinhart, Victor Olofsson, Dominic Cahoon, and all these guys? I really don't know what to do right now. Like these asks are just ridiculous. So if I sign these guys to what they want, $9 million each, whatever, so that's 18 million, then I got 10 million to deal with Olafson, Cahoon, uh, Casey Middlestad. Like I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it done. I think we seriously might have to let Taylor Hall walk or visit it back in free agency when maybe his asking price comes down because i'd love to hang on to taylor hall it worked out great with hall and eichel but i don't know if we can give taylor hall nine million bucks i don't know if we can give sam reinhardt nine million bucks that's why i'm going to qualify him and we're going to see if his asking price comes down so i really don't know what to do right now this is tough like brendan montour and jake mccabe are great don't get me wrong but are they five million dollar great almost six million dollars like i don't really know brendan montour is good but 4.4, they both want contract extensions. What do I do? What do I do? What if I did a three-year deal at 8.75? It's a little bit of term, and you'll still get another big boy contract. 8.75 for three years, okay? You're locked in. Taylor Hall, three years, 8.75. Is this going to work out? Let's see. 8.75. Okay, that was a big offer. It's a big offer. He wanted 9.3. Taylor Hall said yes. Okay, so that changes things. I didn't think he would accept that. We now have $21 million to work with. Okay, so Victor Olofsson, Sam Reinhart, we're going to wait, see if their price comes down. Uh, we got Hall. Okay, we got Taylor Hall. That's all that really matters. 
Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna wait for free agency. We're going to roll the dice. That includes Brendan Montour and Jake McCabe. We're gonna roll the dice. Okay, we're rolling it. I'm I'm a gambling man. We have Hall. We have Eichel. We don't have Olafson yet, but I'm uh, I'm hoping that these guys are going to sign all these guys. Casey Fitzgerald. Yes, young guys. Sure, there you go. Let's revisit this in free agency, July one. Let's put our work boots on let's see what these guys are asking for now we have Taylor Hall sign that's nice Reinhardt's not coming down unfortunately Olafson's dropped to 8.3 like we're gonna be paying these guys so much money I don't know if I can do it. Okay, so Casey Middlestat's asking price has come down quite a bit, 2.9. We're gonna definitely offer him that. There you go, 2.9 for an 84 overall. I will take that any day of the week. Okay, so first things first, I think we should work on Victor Olofsson and getting some defense because Sam Reinhart wants 9.2 million. At this point, do we take the draft picks? Yes, he's a good player. Yes, he had a breakout year, 77 points, but that's not worth nine million bucks. I'm hoping he comes down to like the seven and a half range. That's what I'm hoping for. And as for, not Anthony Mantha, as for Victor Olofsson, I'm kind of hoping he'll take an offer of around seven and a half as well because he is an RFA. So we have some time here. We're buying some time with these guys. If he'll do an offer of like 7.5, he wants to come back to the team, 7.5 for six. Let's see if he'll take that. And now it's worth on the defense because we have Rasmus squared and then we don't really have anything else. I'm looking at a few defensemen and one is Ryan Pollock at just under 5 million bucks. He wants a three-year deal, 84 overall. He's a two-way defenseman. He's got great offensive stats. He's got a really good shooting category. His senses are awesome. 90 discipline, 86 offensive awareness, 88 defensive awareness. This is the kind of guy that I want. So we are going to go ahead and offer him a contract. There is two other teams interested so we're going to go ahead and entice the offer a little bit we're going to go 5.45 for three years for Ryan Pollock and we are going to see if he signs a contract with the Buffalo Sabres come on Ryan I need you here now we need another defenseman so that's going to be one of our top four defensemen I need another one if both of those players sign we're going to have about eight million dollars to work with so I need another top four defenseman here I'm not opposed to bringing back uh, a guy like Jake McCabe even though he wants a ton of money uh, a two-way defenseman I like to play him with an offensive guy uh, we have Yoki Haru as well I could play him with Yoki Haru we'll see maybe what does Yoki Haru want he wants 3.3 Devin Taze is available Ooh, that's a nice player there Devin Taze again he's a two-way guy he's not quite as good as Ryan Pollock a um, bunch of these RFAs we don't want an RFA if Sam Reinhart wanted a reasonable amount of money I would have no problem bringing that guy back but I think uh, unfortunately he just wants way too much uh, so let's go ahead and let's bring either Brandon Montour on a five-year deal I don't like a five-year deal I'm looking more to like a two-year deal like Devon Tays. so 2.95 he's 27 years old how was his year last year he, he had 11 points in 82 games with Colorado I like Devon Tays. I think he's really good I think he's underrated in this game he should be like 84 overall his his stats are pretty good playing him with Ryan Pollock, a familiar face. Let's go ahead and lock him up as well. Let's go ahead and give him a $3.2 million deal. And now we still have some forward options that we got to work with as well. I'm looking at a guy like Ilya Kovalchuk to replace Sam Reinhardt. I know that's a lot. I know, trust me. Because as I see it right now, we have Hall, Eichel, Olafson, Skinner, Casey Middlestat, and then X because that's where Sam Reinhardt would usually be. And we got Tage Thompson, Dylan. And cousins and then X so again we are missing out on a couple forwards here our fourth line we're all good we got Rasmus squared and then we obviously would hopefully have those two defensemen that I just gave a contract to so we might come back to Ilya Kovalchuk as a nice budget option for our third line or our second line or Alex Galchenyuk as well as a nice third scoring line option he had seven points in 14 games with Minnesota he's the guy who could use a fresh start him Ivan Barbashev they're kind of in the same boat they're cheap which is definitely what I want right now so ooh, 
Ooh, I'm looking at Anthony Sorelli here. He's a restricted free agent, and he wants not a lot of money. What is Tampa Bay's cap situation looking like right now? I know they're not having a great time with their cap situation. Let's see what we're looking like here with Tampa. How much cap space do they have? They have basically nothing. So we offer them 2.5. They can't accept it. We get Anthony Sorelli. Huge W. We're taking advantage of a cap strap team. Absolutely love that for me let's go ahead and uh, sign where is he Anthony Sorelli for the third line okay let's give him a contract 2.6 million let's go with that 2.6 uh, a second round pick for Anthony Sorelli absolutely I will pay that we've sent our qualifying offers out obviously they're not going to sign them but we've sent some offers out that I wanted to wait a few days and see if those guys are gonna sign hopefully those two big defensemen Mark Edward Vlasic Seven million. That's the opposite of what I want to do right now. No, thank you. All right, five days in. Casey Middlestat said yes. There you go. Victor Olafson said yes. There you go. Devon Tays. He also says yes. Ryan Pulak. He says yes. Anthony Sorelli. He says yes. But does Tampa say yes? That's the big question. Okay, so we've now done some things, and we have two point nine million dollars to work with with Sam Reinhart not being signed so we're probably gonna have to trade his rights okay so I have some ideas here let's wait and see what Tampa Bay is gonna do I don't think they're gonna match it there you go they have decided not to match it Anthony Sorelli welcome to the squad baby there you go Anthony Sorelli okay so now we have literally no money what do we have we have 3.9 million okay so we have some money we have some cash right now we have a little bit of dough 3.9 uh, uh, we have to re-sign Yoki Haru, so that's basically our money gone right there at 3.3. But we do have him um, penciled in as our uh, restricted free agent, so hopefully that comes down. We can buy some time here with Yoki Haru. So we have some issues here. We have some issues, and the first issue is we have to trade Sam Reinhart and Dominic Cahoon because they want too much money, and we don't have that money. We have three million dollars ish, so it's really not. It's really not a lot to work with but I am going to make some trades and I'm going to trade a couple of players the first two players I'm going to move I'm gonna move Cody Eakin and Zygmus Gergensens now Gergensens is good he's a good fourth liner but he has a lot of trade value so those guys can easily be replaced with guys like Curtis Lazar and Brandon Pierlini both of these guys are good enough for the fourth line so I'm going to shop these two guys around now I might be able to get something for these guys because Gergensens he's uh, he's actually not that bad so we need a second line scorer or a second line power forward because we have Casey Middlestat who if I believe if he's a two-way forward is that right Casey Middlestat maybe I'm completely wrong I don't even know my players what is he he is a playmaker okay so playmaker sniper I need a power forward so I'm going to shop Cody Eakin and Gergensen's for a second line power forward we might might have to throw in some picks. We also have to uh, be careful about the cap situation. But let's see what power forwards are out there. Uh, if anyone is shopping any, let's have a look. A power forward or another playmaker. I wouldn't be opposed to either one of the two, but we're gonna be searching way down here. So we got guys like Chris Kreider, not on that contract. Uh, Klim Costin, okay, okay, Klim Costin. Um, he had, that's in the AHL, right? Yeah, he had 50 points and 70 six games in the AHL he was offered to us last year as well um, I like Klim Costin I think he's not quite good enough for the second line unfortunately uh, Nick Bugestad so he's in free agency we could sign Nick Bugestad he had a huge year so his trade value is inflated like crazy I mean not a huge year but a pretty good year 55 points in 82 games with Minnesota now we could sign him in free agency Okay, Ryan Getzlaff is another guy. He wants a lot of money, though, so unfortunately we're not going to get him. Dominic Kubalik. Ooh, I would like Dominic Kubalik. He's the guy I want. Oh, man, he doesn't have that much trade value. He's not making a lot of money. Ooh, baby. Him or Max Jones. Max Jones is on a big contract. Ooh, yeah, I really, really like Dominic Kubalik. 
Ooh, he might be our guy. Uh, Vitaly Kravtsov, he's just not quite ready, unfortunately. Anyone else down here? Anders Lee, not on that contract. Um, yeah, I think that Dominic Kubalik is our guy. Okay, so we're going to shed some cap here. We are going to get rid of Cody Eakin, which is fine. And we are going to give you guys the rights to Dominic Cahoon, who is a former Chicago Blackhawk, actually. So it actually worked out. Um, but he was awesome. Awesome for us last year, 55 points. But if I can get a guy like Kubalik for the second line, that would be fantastic. I just want to triple check here that he doesn't have an extension looming that I'm not sure about, unless there's like some crazy eight year extension that Chicago offered him. Just being smart. Okay, no, there's no uh, extension, so we're in the clear. So let's go Dominic Cahoon, Cody Eakin. I am going to throw in a third because that is some greasy moves there if we do that. because Dominic Cahoon's trade value is crazy but Cahoon, Eakin, and a third for Dominic Kubalik. Will this trade go through? Trade accepted. Thank you very much. We kind of cheese the system right there by trading away a player like Dominic Cahoon but I mean he did have a good year. His trade value is pretty high so I'm going to take that and run with it. Dominic Kubalik, welcome to Buffalo. Honestly getting Dominic Kubalik was a huge, huge deal. I'm very happy about that. Uh, I was going to go and I was going to get Ilya Kovalchuk or another uh, guy who I think could fit in, but I mean, Dominic Kubalik was the best option available and we made a smart trade. So right now we're going Hall, Eichel, Olafson, Skinner, Casey Middlestack, Kubalik, Tage Thompson, Dylan Cousins, Slash, Anthony Sorelli. One of them is going to have to play on the wing. We're good for our four line. I actually hung on to Gergensen's. Uh, we got Rasmus squared. We got Taze. We got Ryan Pollock. I'm good. I am good to go. We are going to have to wait and see what happens with Henry Yokiharyu. He is actually still unsigned, but I think he might actually accept his qualifying offer. So I'm going to see if there's any young guys I can sign here for our American Hockey League team, like Zachary Seneshin. Why not give him a contract? Give him a shot. There you go down there in the American Hockey League. League. I'm going to go ahead and uh, sign some players. I'm going to just strictly go for our American Hockey League team. Kiefer Bellows. Ooh, he's restricted though, so I don't think that's going to work. And we have to sign uh, Henry Yokiharyu, so I'm strictly going to keep it UFA. Cheap guys. Just going to go cheap young players who need a change of scenery. Not going to go crazy, but there you go. Honestly, I was really nervous there. I didn't know how that offseason was going to turn out, and I still really don't with uh, Sam Ryan. Reinhardt. We're going to have to trade him. Let's see if we can find any offers if we use the find a trade feature. Let's have a look here. Let's see. He's a restricted free agent. What are teams willing to give us for Sam Reinhardt? I don't know if there's any trades going to be found. Yeah, unfortunately, no trades found. Okay, so let's either wait and see if he's going to just uh, maybe sign his qualifying offer. Maybe. That'd be kind of fun. You want to do that? Let's try. Okay, sign your qualifying offer or he's going to get offer sheeted. I'm hoping he gets offer sheeted. So I'm going to simulate another week and then we'll see what happens. Okay, so we're here in August and unfortunately I don't think Sam Reinhardt is going to get an offer sheet. So let's trade him. Now, what do we trade him for? It's free money, really. I don't want to trade him for like a top tier prospect, like someone who's insane. But I wouldn't mind getting a nice young defenseman who's on his entry level contract. So let's see what we can do here. Um, or a guy who's making, you know, three million bucks. <laughs> let's see. I don't want to cheese the system too much, but I, you know, we do have quite the asset here. Let me have a look around the league. Ooh, I'd love a Timothy Liljegren or a Rasmus Sandin. I would love a Rasmus Sandin. Do they have the cap space to sign a guy? No, they have $1 million in cap space. There's no way. I have to send Sam Reinhardt to a team that has at least $8 million in cap space, like Ottawa. I got to trade him to Ottawa. And they do have a bunch of young, nice defensemen like Eric Brandstrom. Oh, man, would I love to get Eric Brandstrom. Or I could go trade him for Habby Bulin. Maybe something like that. You know, a guy that we saw just picked in the draft. We could trade him one for one for Habby Bulin and 
and they get a nice young stud. They're rich on the defense with Brandstrom and Shabbat, and obviously Lassie Thompson. Jet Wu they got somehow from Vancouver. So a guy like Habibulin is on my list. All right, remember Habibulin. Let's see what other teams have a lot of cap space. The Rangers, the New York Rangers. Now, I'm not going to get Adam Fox. There's no way. Um, he's got one year left. T Tony D'Angelo just signed a big deal. I mean, I could get Adam Fox. He is good. He's really good. Um, that's cheesing the system a little bit here. Let's move on. So there's really not a lot of teams, unfortunately, that either A, have the cap space to acquire a guy like Sam Reinhart, or even want to. There's a handful of teams, and one of them is Ottawa, and they do want Sam Reinhart. Now, I could go ahead and trade him to, you know, San Jose or St. Louis or Tampa Bay, and he would just sit as an RFA for the entire year, because obviously they can't sign him. But I don't want to do that. I want to give Sam Reinhardt a chance to play. Now, either we trade him for Stutzel or Habibulin. What do you think we should do here? Uh, we have... Oh man, I would love Tim Stutzel. Absolutely love Tim Stutzel. However, we are super deep on our center position. Defense, not so much. So I think we're going to pull the trigger for Habi Bulin. Now, I don't even know if they're going to do this. Habi Bulin for Reinhardt one for one. I don't even know if they're going to be able to pull that deal off. So we're going to do this. We're going to help out our boys in Ottawa because there's no way we can keep Sam Reinhardt. No way in hell. It's just not going to happen, unfortunately. So uh, we could couldn't make it happen with Sam Reinhardt, but we brought back Hall and we got Olafson. We got Dominic Kubelik. I mean, I'm happy with the moves that we made. We got Anthony Sorelli. I'm happy. I'm very, very happy. And we should think about trading Gergensen because he has so much trade value. It's crazy. But Sam Reinhardt for Habi Bulin, a recent first round pick of the Ottawa Senators, sixth overall, a defensive defenseman. I'm a big fan of Ivan Habi Bulin. Will this trade go through? through one for one trade accepted i doubt anyone in ottawa will think we came out on the short end of this trade so it's a done deal now you say i could have got more but there it's an it's an rfa you're basically just trading his rights okay getting a top essentially a top five pick for a guy who's not going to play for you it was a smart deal it's a deal we had to make you know could i have gotten a little bit more from a cap strap team and have sam reinhardt not play the entire year yeah probably Probably. Um, we still have to deal with Yoki Haru, but I didn't want Sam Reinhardt to be a restricted free agent for the entire year. I wanted him to get a contract. He's going to get first line minutes in Ottawa. I wouldn't be surprised if he already has a contract a couple days later. Let's check out Ottawa here. Let's see if they signed him. I assume they would have instantly. Uh, nice little sign and trade. There you go. He got his money, okay? 9.2 for 6. There's absolutely no way we were going to be able to match that. And yes, I probably could have gotten Tim Stutzla, but why would I do that? It's just cheesing the system. So they signed him. Good luck, Sammy boy. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't work it out. Let's go ahead and see if we can re-sign Yoki Haru real quick. I have $2.2 million to do it, and I think he wants three, so this is going to be difficult. Okay, so Yoki Haru only wants 1.1 now that we waited. Thank you very much. There you go. Okay, everything ended up working out. I did not go into this uh, thinking Thinking we wouldn't have Sam Reinhardt on our team. I'm glad we got to keep Yoki Haru. There you go. I'm glad we got to keep Taylor Hall. I know there's going to be some people saying, oh, you could have traded Skinner and you could have kept on to Sam Reinhardt. Yes, I know, but I'm not here to blow up the team. I'm here to win a Stanley Cup, okay? Jeff Skinner put up comparable numbers to, um, to Sam Reinhardt, and Sam Reinhardt was asking more than what Jeff Skinner was. So, oh, baby, look at this second line of plus three. Kubelik, Middlestat, Jeff Skinner. Oh, baby. Okay, let me work out some things here, and we are going to hopefully make this a good-looking team. Dylan Cousins, he's up to an 84. Oh, boy. Things are looking good. Things are looking really, really good here in Buffalo. Hall, Eichel, Olafson, Kubelik, Middlestat, Skinner. So all these 85s are playing like 88s. That's going to be an amazing line. Watch out for Casey Middlestat. Breakout year, baby. Uh, Tage 
Paige Thompson, Dylan Cousins, and Anthony Sorelli, Pierlini, Gergensons, and Matthew Phillips. That's fine. We'll work out on all that stuff later. Von Taze and Ryan Polak both have plus threes. That's amazing. And then the goaltenders. Uh, no, that's not what's going to happen. Let me change some things up here. Let me uh, completely get it to where I want it, and I'll check back with you in a second. So I just want to do a check here. We got Captain Jack. That's not changing. Taylor Hall has an assistant captain and Rasmus. Okay. I think we should keep it like that. Let's go with that. I don't see a reason why we should give an assistant captain to anyone else. Maybe Jeff Skinner. I think it's good to have a veteran assistant captain forward in Taylor Hall and then Rasmus Dahl in there with the assistant captain. I'm fine with that. I'm all good. Okay, so nothing's really changed on our forward core here, but Dylan Cousins or Anthony Sorelli on the wing, what do we do? Now, Dylan Cousins is a center slash a right wing, so we could go something like that, but Dylan Cousins is a natural center. He has 75 face-offs, but there's always a but. Uh, Anthony Sorelli has 82 draws, so I think we should keep Anthony Sorelli right there. Pierlini, Gergensen that brought up Curtis Lazar. Defense is all good, and as for the goaltenders, UPL, welcome to the big club, baby. There you go. As for the American Hockey League, let's go ahead, go best lines. We're going to see Hola, Hola Lilia. He's going to go ahead and uh, see the backup role in his first year in North America. I haven't even looked at the starting lines yet. I mean, that looks fine. I don't think really I should change anything. That's our first round pick we just got. Let's, ooh, we could give him first line minutes. Let's see if that works out here. Let's uh, change some things around. We'll give that line a plus one. There you go. That looks good to go. Uh, as for the defense, yeah, that's fine. Javi Bulin, he's our new stud. Hopefully he, um, oh, we got a plus five. We put him with Bryson. There you go. Okay, change some things around. Uh, Jacob Bryson, Ivan Javi Bulin. We'll go ahead and give that a plus one. There you go. Okay, things are looking up here in Buffalo and Rochester. Let's get one or two games of simulation done. I don't want to go too crazy here because this video has always been a long one, but Sam Reinhardt, unfortunately, buddy, it just wasn't meant to be. Good luck in Ottawa. Honestly, I wish you the best. Do we have a game against Ottawa coming up? We do. It's on the 26th. We might see that in the next episode. So let's get game number one done. We start on the road here in Detroit. Let's go. Jack Eichel, another year as the captain of the Buffalo Sabres. You got to see playoff hockey now let's work on that. Dominic Kubelik, welcome to Buffalo. We got a couple new faces here, some new defensemen. Let's go. Period number one, and it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Period number two, 2-0. Two okay, even though we're out shooting them, Vander Kane and Tyler Bertuzzi score the goals for them. Come on, guys. Don't get shut out in your first game. There you go. Dominic Kubelik on the power play. See, that's the X-Tech jinx. I said the S word. I said shut out. I did it again. Jeff Skinner, he ties up the game. The $9 million man that second line expect big things from these guys I think they're gonna do amazing together and especially with a young kid down the middle like Casey Middlestat watch out that could be a very very dangerous line going into overtime here are we going into a shootout and we get the shootout win Taylor Hall with the shootout goal you love to see it okay and then I'm gonna slow sim this game against Tampa because I gotta get my revenge against the Tampa Bay Lightning they kicked us out of the playoffs last year and then we'll end off this video after this one. We got our home opener here. Dominic Kubelik scored in his first game. Can he do it again in game number two of the season? It's 2-1. Hall and Olafson. There you go. Do not give us a power play. We will strike. Victor Olafson and Taylor Hall score for us. Braden Point gets goals for them. Period number two. It's 3-2. Okay. Casey Middlestat. There you go. Every member of that second line has a goal. And then Walcott. I've never heard of that guy, but he goes ahead cuts the lead to one. Rasmus the King Dolan jumping up in the play, scoring a goal from below the faceoff dot. He is a very sneaky offensive defenseman. Taylor Hall, there you go. Five to two. Take that Tampa. He kicked us out of the postseason. I'm getting my revenge. We start the year off two 
and O. Oh. You guys know I can't leave on a heater. We're 2-0. Oh. Can we go 3-0 and oh up against the Vegas Golden Knights? All right, this is the problem. I have too much fun recording franchise mode. Then when that, when my recording's at over an hour, I know I got to stop this. I got to edit the video, but I'm having too much fun. Let's go. Vegas and Buffalo. Can we go 3-0 and oh to start off the year? It's looking good. Casey Middlestat and Taylor Hall, period number two. Three nothing. Taylor Hall on the power play. Is he looking for a hat trick in the third period? Oh, Colin Miller breaks up the natural hat trick. I was just going to say, could be a natural one. Rasmus Dolan makes it five to nothing. We are rolling. Devon Tays, welcome to Buffalo. Mark Jankowski gets a goal, breaking the shutout. Who said the S word? Who said the shutout word? Max Pacioretty makes it six to two. This game is way, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe not. A six goal third period. Peyton Krebs, but Rasmus Dolan gets his third of the season, his second of the game. And we put up seven on Marc Andre Fleury and the Vegas Golden Knights. Seven goals. We just put up seven goals against these guys. Okay. All right. We're 3-0. Can we go 4-0 up against Florida? Let's keep it going. Let's keep the good times going here up against Florida. Okay. This will be the last game of this episode. I promise. This is the last one. This video is going to take me forever to edit. Period. Number one. Can we keep it going? It's 1-1. Jack Eichel. There you go. The speedy Michael Grabner gets a goal. We started UPL. So his first career start, the young kid gets a start at home against Florida, period number two. It's 2-1. Okay, Jonathan Huberdo on the power play. Come on, boys. There you go, Casey Middlestat. You absolutely love to see it. Look for Casey to have a breakout year. Victor Olofsson, there you go. 3-2 to two here with 11 minutes left. They have a couple of power plays, but we kill it off, baby. That's Curtis Lazar dumping pucks, tie running style. The shots are even. 3-2. to two. Make it 4-2. to two. Curtis Lazar has good penalty killing pays off and we start the year off 4 and 0 oh, things you absolutely love to see i would love to keep this going but i have to end off this video at one point uh victor olsen leading the way 8 points in 4 games the changes we made i'm happy with it i'm happy with how this team looks i wouldn't say we're better than we were last year i mean maybe i think we're doing okay uh dominic kubalik 8 points in 4 games have yourself a hot start okay let's check out one thing here just because i'm interested and i love my boy sammy reinhardt he's got two points in three games both of them goals at a boy i hope he has nothing but success in ottawa good luck to sammy reinhardt so Okay, question of the episode before we end this bad boy off. Are we better than last year? Do you think we have a better looking team than we did last year? Let me know. With the additions of Dominic Kubelik, Dylan Cousins, uh, much improved, it looks like a much improved Casey Middlestat. Are we a better team? I think our defense is much better with Ryan Pulak, even though he's kind of having a slow start, but doesn't really matter. I think our defense is a lot better. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching that was that was a lot of work i put my gm skills to the test there thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one